Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of endometrial polyp. Fortunately, this is our 250 case video and I am very glad to present this case in front of you. If you are not a subscriber of our YouTube channel, then we highly appreciate you consider subscribing. This will help our channel grow a little more faster. A 35 years old female patient came to us with metroregia and subfertility. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the longitudinal section of the uterus. You can see a hyper echoic structure when we are swiping the transducer laterally within the endometrium. This hyper echoic structure is attached to the endometrium with a broad base. There's a sessile lesion, you can say, not a pedunculated one, and it is protruding into the lumen. You can see a hypo to anechoic margin surrounding this lesion, which should be the endometrial collection. So this hyperechoic well-defined structure protruding into the lumen should be either endometrial polyp or submucous fibroid. Now, well, submucous fibroid will arise from the myometrium and indent into the endometrium, but this lesion looks to be originated from the endometrium itself. Again, the submucous fibroid should be hypoechoic, whereas this lesion looks hyperechogenic. So, this should be a case of endometrial polyp. Now, we want to evaluate further. So on transverse section, you can see the lesion arises from the lateral wall of the endometrium at the upper part of the uterus. You can see two hyperechoic borders here. This is called bright H sign. Now to evaluate with Doppler finding, we have put the color Doppler and you can see a tiny feeding vessel is supplying the lesion. If it was an endometrial carcinoma, there should be more pronounced vascularity and obviously not a single feeding vessel. So this single feeding vessel on color Doppler is also known as a pedicle artery sign. This features conclude it as a case of endometrial polyp. Let's see some pictures. Here is the longitudinal transverse section of the uterus excluding the polyp at the mid sagittal plane. Here is the longitudinal section of the uterus. You can see the bright edges here which is called the bright edge sign and this lesion is focally interrupting the normal mucosal pattern. This feature is known as interrupted mucosa sign. Another picture of the longitudinal sections and you can see these signs here also. On transverse section image, you can see this is the endometrium, this is the bright age sign and you can see this polyp is protruding into the endometrium causing the interrupted mucosa sign. Another transverse section image and you can see the polyp here. Again the transverse section images, you can see polyp here. Here is the color Doppler picture and you can see this feeding artery coming from the posterior lateral aspect forming the pedicle artery sign. You can also see surrounding mild collection well here. The lesion measures around 11 mm. So, in summary, a well-defined homogeneously echogenic solitary sessile lesion surrounded by minimal endometrial fluid focally interrupting the normal mucosal contour of the uterine cavity protruding into it, forming the interrupted mucosa sign with two well-defined short echogenic linear echoes at its borders perpendicular to the ultrasound beam forming the bright edge sign is noted arising from the lateral wall of the superior part of the endometrium. Color Doppler shows a single feeding vessel extending to the lesion forming the pedicle artery sign. This feature suggests it as a case of endometrial polyp. I am also posting this case pictures on my blog site, link will be on the description box below. If you want to copy this type of report, then you will get this description on my blog site and also it will be available on YouTube description box. So don't forget to check that. Now the take home message. In confusing cases, scanning on the postmenstrual state may help further. You will get a thin endometrium and some endometrial physiological collection which may not give you a very good view like sonohistoriography but it will be helpful to evaluate much better. Polyps are usually hyperechoic whereas submucous fibers are hypoechoic. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.